today it's my extra special privilege to welcome Robin Martinelli on the line. She has Martinelli in Investigations Incorporated. So Robin, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much. It's my privilege. Oh, well, great. Well, why don't you just, just jump right in and tell the moms how you became a private investigator. That's such an unusual thing, and uh, we're all excited to hear your story. Well, the coolest thing about being a private investigator uh, nowadays is it's kind of the cool thing to do, and what was so great about being a mother in this industry is that being a single mother as I was, I could take my son, and as I married my husband, I could take my children into a store and be undercover and be filming people, and it was like non-noticeable. So That's a great point because nobody would expect that. They, they wouldn't, and as it all started, um, I went, uh, graduated locally from Georgia, born and raised in Georgia, and I wanted to have my career in entrepreneurship and in marketing, and my mother told me always I could be anything I ever wanted to be. So I never thought anything different. So I wanted to be a Nancy Drew cop, and I wanted to do all this stuff. But unfortunately, unfortunately but fortunately, at 19 years old, um, I late in 19, almost 20, um, I became pregnant, and um, I am a free bleeder, so I didn't know I was pregnant until I was seven months pregnant. So we had a baby on the way in three months, and I had no idea it would even be a boy. So me and my mother, a uh, single parent, going in there, have Coleman, and I just didn't know what I was going to do for the rest of my life. So I'm like, okay, out of necessity, I literally had to turn my whole world upside down. And, and the complications I had with him uh, first couple of years with, um, you know, as hyper his was, he was, I had to bring him to work with me. So I'm like, okay, what can I do that I can bring him to work with me and him go to kindergarten? So I looked into the field of process serving where I can actually go knock on a door and serve people papers. This was real great because I was taking him with me, and it, it was it was nothing to send him in the back seat coloring and pick him up and take him to the front door and knock on the door. Everybody came because they thought I was in distress. So that was pretty great to do that. And then I started getting uh, people wanting me to do investigations, but I always wanted to be a cop, and I needed to be have insurance. So I said, okay, I'll take a break for the next two years and become a sheriff's deputy. And my mother helped me out, and I did, and that's where I got to see the law enforcement experience, and I really enjoyed that. Um, uh, luckily, unfortunately, it didn't pay me enough money, so I got out of the law enforcement, still had my son with me, and decided to open up my own private detective uh, agency, which was really great, and still keep my process serving going. So um, I started doing a lot of work for lawyers, and um, I just I married my husband, which is a Gwinnett County police officer of 25 years, and he's great, and he has two children. Um, he was a widow, so I adopted the girls. They were seven and three at the time. So then now I had three children, and my husband's working night shift, and I'm shopping at Walmart trying to surveillance people. <laughs> But uh, my industry is not all about adultery and um, following people. It is also about keeping people safe and finding heirs and assets and uh, just other undercover stuff that uh, people could use in the everyday world. Um, would you like me to give, me, give you some examples that the mothers could use? Absolutely. Well, some good tips would be um, that... When you're going in a, a partnership or you're trying to check out a client or you're fixing to take on a new endeavor, you can always hire. You can do two things. You can, there's a lot of free websites out there that you can go to. And you can call a private investigator and sit down and have a consult with them and say, what can I do freely and what can you do? Then there are also paid sites that we as investigators can go into legally and give you information as in uh, socials, date of birth, different corporation liens, assets, to protect yourself uh, either from this person, a new boyfriend, a fiancé, um, uh, somebody all of a sudden a stalker or anything in the family. And that's a, a low cost. Everybody usually thinks it's two and 3000 It's only like $200. To so go um, visit with a private investigator or to, to do it? online yourself? Um, online yourself is usually free, but to visit with an investigator and them do the online search because because you can't, because they get it differently because they have a, a uh, license to do that, that would be $200 for a private investigator to actually give you that information. Sure, which could save you thousands and thousands if you get in with the wrong person. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the other uh, tip would be that uh, in the state of Georgia um, only, it is a uh, one-party consent recording state, which means as long as you're part of the conversation, you can record anybody you speak to inside the state of Georgia. So if you're having a conversation with somebody that wants to um, tell you different things in a contract or something, you can legally record that conversation without them knowing. Hmm, did not know that. Mm -hmm. In the state of Georgia. Now, um, it, it may not be legal if you call outside the state of Georgia or the person is outside the state of Georgia. But when we're doing interviews over the phone in uh, both criminal and civil cases, you know, we like to record the conversation because then that way we're able to protect ourselves as private investigators and the moms can too to say, look, this is what I found out and this is what I said and I have a tape recording. You can always take that tape recording to the private investigator. They can send it off to a transcriber, and it becomes an audio file or a transcription for the report. Um, yeah, another good tip in the state of Georgia is trash is, is legal to obtain. Anybody's trash is legal to obtain. So to protect yourselves, you know, I would never put any documents in your trash that could be taken either by the trash person, a private investigator, a neighbor, uh, somebody wanting your bank account, uh, receipts, anything in trash. It is legal for anybody to come, come to the trash stop and take the trash. Hmm. Wow. Right. I guess it's uh, important to invest in a shredder. <laughs> yes, or, or or just take it to your work, or just take it somewhere else, and just not have trash. <laughs> so oh, we have a lot of trash around here with three boys. <laughs> oh yes, yes, and with with my children too, um, ages twenty and um, eighteen and fourteen. Um, it's it's really interesting as far as the trash they throw away with emails and stuff like that. I also like to warn everybody from here to the computer age in, which will never end. Anything and everything you do on the computer can stay on that hard drive, even if it's deleted. I, as a private investigator hiring a forensic expert, can pull anything off your hard drive ever. Mm -hmm. Ever, ever, uh, ever. So, so everything that you send out there in the web world, no matter where it is, I've told my children, look, you don't know if you want to be a judge one day or a president or a police officer or a lawyer. You know, you don't want something floating out there in cyberspace off of Facebook or anything that could be obtained that could harm you or your family or give somebody information you otherwise don't want them to have. Mm, yes, that's a big, big deal these days with the teenagers and all these social networking sites, and it's, it would be advisable to all parents to have a, that talk with their children because, mm -hmm. you know, they don't think about it. <laughs> they you know, they're, just, they're in the moment. They are. They're not, they're not thinking 15 years from now when they, they want to run for Congress. <laughs> yeah, and I tell them, look, you're the industry that they're going to try to pull that up, so just know everything you type can be told to a judge. If you can type it and you can tell it to a judge, then it's appropriate to send and pictures. Did you? Would you want that judge or jury to see that? Mm. That's 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 the new thing. And a good my, rule of thumb. It is. It is. And then my daughter Christy is one of the one of the first youngest private investigators ever in the entire world, and that's just been very exciting with the new um, TV show that we're probably going to have coming out soon. We've already signed the contracts and everything, and it's just a. Did cool you do day. that with uh, Courtney Cox and David Arquette? Contacted y'all to buy the rights. Um, that, that's something that I wouldn't have mentioned, but <laughs> oh, we're just not supposed to. But um, yes, that that is true, and that we um, also um, have been on the Montel Geraldo and CNN, and have signed a contract with William Morris Agency. So the script and everything is in works. We had to take a break, I guess, or they did because of the writer's strike for a while. But that's been in works for um, a long while, and it's been um, very interesting and very exciting to have that. I bet. That is exciting. Mm -hmm. And how old was she when she started? She went to school when she was 17 years old at the private investigator school, which is a requirement, and passed that through her junior, senior year in high school um, because I was sick. And then she, as, as the company was growing, she did that. And then on her 18th birthday, we applied for her license, and within a couple of months, she received it. Well, that is so neat. So mm -hmm. she obviously um, holds you in high regard and 
all the work that you've done to to get yourself where you are now with your business and that I think is a fascinating example of how being an entrepreneurial mom can be beneficial for your children because they see you in a new light they see you as a you know not just mom who makes the sandwiches for school or whatever but as an active participant in the you know, outside world and contributing in your own way and she obviously admired you so much she decided to follow in your footsteps so congratulations for that no i appreciate it we didn't expect to have the fame at all um i don't know if you remember a couple of three years ago the the horse rider um barbados died uh the horse and um it was a Tuesday, and I wanted to thank my daughter in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, which I didn't realize such a big newspaper. I wanted to thank her in the paper as her senior year for being being so great as a senior in, in, in the paper. And uh, it just so happened Barbados died that weekend, and when I contacted the paper, they were like, well, we don't believe this. I'm like, okay. So I copied the license. I sent it to AJC with a little article, and they put her on the front page of the news. Wow. And within <laughs> seconds, I was getting phone call from CNN, Good Morning America, Geraldo. Um, it, it was just, it, I had never, ever imagined. And, you know, the, 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 the phenomena going around about the secret, you know, with that, I've sat at the house before and just imagined it'd be cool to be on CNN or it'd be cool to be on Montel and have a good time. And, my gosh, within three weeks, it happened. Wow. It was just, it was just. <laughs> You know, it was just a thought that I thought, and then it just happened. And then, you know, me and Christy get a free, free flight to New York and California, and it's just been a great mother and daughter experience. And now my other little one wants to do it, and now my son is serving papers. And I just wanted to develop for my family a second income that if they wanted to do the PI work, they could, or if they wanted to be a veterinarian like my little one wants to be, great. But these experiences have given them an outlet to explore other avenues of what they, what they might want to do as part as entrepreneurship. But I think as mothers, sometimes we do this out of necessity for our children. It just becomes, okay, I need to do something else, and next thing you know, it becomes successful just because of necessity for them and, and caring and wanting and needing for our families. Exactly. I We had talked earlier, and I had told you how, I became an entrepreneur after my son was born just because every our lives had shifted and going to work in the corporate world 40-plus hours a week no longer worked. And it was at that point that I started my own business, and within six months I had been making more money working eight hours a week in my pajamas than I had been working full-time. And it was just, I was like, man, this is awesome. This is I like being an entrepreneur. I wish I'd known about this earlier. So sometimes you're kind of surprised by your success because Mm -hmm. you didn't expect it. No. But you do it out of love for your children and your family. Mm -hmm. I did. Absolutely, I did. And um, each and every one of them have a different asset for the the company. The girls do better than my son, but my son has been seeing me do it since he was four. And um, he just knows what to say. And, you know, people come to the door for children. I hate to say it, but they do look of the age, and they're never at risk. Everybody asks me all the time, oh, has Christy ever had a gun pulled on her or this? And absolutely not, because she takes flowers or candy, or she's very nice to these people, and she doesn't cause any any um, evasiveness when they come to the door. She's not precocious or anything, so it's like she just gives them the paper and leaves, and um, everything's fine. So she's had a few people upset with her. But, you know, it's been an okay experience, and she's never been in arm's way. I have told her if there's ever a situation where she thinks she's in arm's way, along with my other investigators, just leave. Just, mm-hmm. It's not a good situation. Just leave. And, you know, my agency doesn't carry any guns or anything. Right. Uh, I could see, you know, some moms being concerned that their children not get exposed to danger, but I think a lot of it's common sense. I used to... Well, I still have rental property, and I used to show the property, and 98% of my tenants just turned out to be females, I think, because they felt comfortable with me being a female landlord. Well, I had one, one guy show up, and he wanted to see the the unit, and I was feeling just, you know, that little sixth sense you have that's like, hmm, th- something's just not right. I said, well, go 